Hello friends and welcome. My name is Popeye and today we're playing some more Steins Gate and no promises but I feel like today will actually be the ending of Steins Gate. Um, if my prediction is correct it'll actually be a slightly shorter stream than normal. And I'm not really basing this on much other than the fact that last stream we started at this exact same scene with this exact same text and it took us about an hour 15 minutes to get to the ending from there. Um, I assume that the true ending is a little bit longer so I'm thinking somewhere between one hour 15 minutes to one and a half hours but we will see there is no promises on that. But yes what did we do last time? Last time we did the paradox meltdown ending which is where we choose uh Basically, we have more intimacy with Christina. Um, there's a very heart-wrenching scene just before we decide we're going to go to the Beta World line. We share a lovely moment with Christina. They have their first, second, and I think third kiss all together. Just as we're about to rush into uh, the Beta World line, she runs into the laboratory and she gets cut off as she's saying something. What that something was, we don't exactly know. I have suspicions, and I'm assuming that this ending will confirm those suspicions. Um, yeah, at this point in time, there's literally no no other options. We've done all the choices. We're on the true ending path right now. We're on the choice of Steins Gate, and I'm hoping we will see the end of it today. Uh, so with that... Let's reread some text that we started the last stream with. Akiba is empty again today. Yotaku have all made the exodus to Kamima for the second day of battle. But come nightfall, they will return to Akiba like a victorious army laden with spoils, and the streets will be chaos. I know Daru has gone to Kamima. The question is, has Mayuri? I hope she has. I want things to be normal again. I remember what I heard yesterday, the feelings Mayuri expressed at her grandmother's grave. The events of the last few weeks have affected her as well. After I escorted Mayuri home from the cemetery, I spent the whole night racking my brain for a third option, a way out of this mess. My thoughts were a jumble, ideas coming and going too fast to judge which were right and which were wrong. But of course, there is no right choice here. For in the end, it always comes back to the same question, who do I let die? And no matter how I try to dance around it, the answer is always the same, I can't choose. Is there no one else who can make this decision? No, even if there were, I know I'd never accept their choice, whichever it happened to be. Once again, I'm headed in for the roof of Rodicon. I had to get out of the lab. My area Chris, who might return at any moment. I can't face them now. I look up at the sky. The clouds are dark and heavy. It could start raining any minute now. I thought that I was alone, but someone was here before me. Chris, who's lying in the middle of the roof, arms and legs spread as if making a snow angel. The image of Chris in a pool of blood flashes through my mind. Is she alright? I run towards her, but before I make it halfway, she suddenly sits up and turns to face me. <sighs> what a dumb thing to say. Fortunately, it looks like Chris who didn't hear me. is busy combing her disheveled hair with her fingers. I breathe a silent sigh of relief. Mim is here for the emotional pain. Welcome, Mim. そっか。ここだとあんたと会っちゃう可能性があること忘れてた。何をしていたんだ。考え事。そうか。考え事。<笑> Chris, who seems to be in the same boat, she's staring at the capsule toy dispenser in the corner, her face wearing the usual frown. 
The awkward silence drags on. When you think about it, Chrissy's fate rests in my hands. My decision will determine whether she lives or dies. Her fantastic hypothesis yesterday was a desperate attempt to construct a scenario where she doesn't die. Even if she believes that her theory is correct, it must be difficult for her to avoid imagining her own death. I force a smile. I'm getting really uncomfortable here. Damn, I was expecting a sarcastic remark like, since when do mad scientists have manners, or something. Just then, something cold lands on the tip of my nose. When I look up, raindrops start landing on my forehead. An evening shower. It's only going to get more intense, and quickly. Chrissy hasn't moved a muscle. She's just standing there with her arms folded, staring at the ground as if she doesn't notice the rain at all. Oi! She's acting strange, like her mind is elsewhere. I knew it, she's been thinking about... In less than a minute, the rain turns into a full downpour. We had no time to seek shelter, except for that one minute. Chrisu's scream is drowned out by the roar of the rain. <sighs> now safely inside the building, we take a moment to catch our breath. It's been a week since Suzuha's time machine disappeared, but Rodicon is still closed. The lights are off, it's pretty dark inside. <laughs> It's suddenly wet? I mean, this is the third time we've done this. They should really know it's coming. But <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be identical to the very end where we whisper into her ear what our decision is. Even in the dim light, I can tell that Chris was scrambling to cover her chest. She's too self-conscious, but the color of her underwear, huh? Hmm, gotta be white. You're not imagining it, you can see it now. Stop doing those weird Google searches, Mim. ま、たとえ服を脱いだとしても、この暗さだから案ずることはない。お前の貧相なヌード姿は誰にも見られることは。それ以上喋ると、あんたの大脳新皮質をポン酢につけて高級料亭で提供してやるんだから。<笑> Thank you, Samus. Stop doing those weird Google searches, Mem. <laughs> we can't stop you, but we can quote me, having said this. It is now forever saved. Oh, and it's only one quote off of quote 42, and 42 is the answer to everything. And we could have known that the answer to everything is Mim does weird Google searches. And Shy is here, and Shy has regimed a stretch. So let's do that. Move this camera up just a little bit. How are you, Shy? How is everyone doing? This is the time to check in. Tuck in my shirt so you don't get to see my belly. I've eaten a lot today. My stomach is bulging. And it wasn't wasn't healthy things either. I had a day where I just ate junk food, basically. Everyone is incredibly tired. 
Honestly, I'm probably gonna be tired soon too. I ate a lot of sugar that I probably shouldn't have, and I'm guessing I'm gonna crash pretty soon after stream. Ugh. Samus had a day where they ate a giant meal, then cleaned off everyone else's dessert plate, and somehow still felt like they could keep going. Yeah, <laughs> basically, what I did today is, um, my mom, she makes, like, a little, like, Chris stuff for Christmas, little desserts, and you chop them up real small, like, the bite-sized pieces. And now that Christmas is over, and we have, like, six tins of it, like, this big left to eat, we just pull them out of the freezer and eat them one by one. And by one by one, I mean one handful at a time, because I have no self-control right now. <laughs> Alright, there was your stretch. Pull the camera back down. <laughs> Mim says we both know at least part of his terrible internet history. He dies, one of us will be the one to take ownership of his data and ignore the weirder things on his hard drive. Cheesecake is amazing. I love cheesecake. Uh. Actually, that camera can probably still come down just a smidge. There we go. Please, spare me that horror. Still, these wisecracks are a welcome distraction. Cheesecake and ice cream cake. Those are my two favorite cakes. I don't like, like normal cake cake, because it's just too dry. It's too much actual cake. <laughs> You love cheesecake, but you can't eat it? Oh, are you lactose? I see Chrissy's shadowy form move to sit on the staircase. I sit next to her. Yeah, my fiance, she is lactose. And she has, like, uh, like, lactose pills. But you're supposed to have them, like half an hour to an hour before you consume anything, and it's just always like someone's like, hey, let's go get cake. Or like, let's go to this place, and you don't have like an hour to consume the pill ahead of time. So it's like, either you just feel like crap, or you don't eat the, you don't eat the cheesecake. <laughs> Need more detailed instructions. Yeah, th there is a ton of footage Mim hasn't posted from before, uh, he was streaming of us doing dumb things. Uh, yeah, I'm just shouting out Mim at this point. If you check out his YouTube channel, there's some of those videos. Uh, like, it's the one where we parked the tank on the yacht there. That was a pretty fun one. Oh, you're not lactose, it's just the texture? Uh, I gotcha. <laughs> oh, it's not? Aw. Oh. I know the, the the Christmas episodes are there, and I can't remember what other episodes are there. I think you have one where you guys are doing um, the Tron racing. I wasn't there for that one. Our bodies gradually grow cold. We start shivering. Maybe I should take off my wet clothes. If I do that, Chris will just call me a perv again. Better not. My eyes gradually adjust to the darkness. Yeah, you can just post the link, ma'am. I mean, I'm pretty sure... I think I have it banned for regular users, but mod should be able to, for sure. There you go. Check out Mim's channel. There's us doing dumb stuff from, like... Four years ago? Something like that? I'm gonna get up and move around a bit. That's what the stretch time is for! Do more stretching! I can see Chrissy more clearly now. He's huddled up against the wall. 
バカなこの暗さでは俺がどこを見ているかなどわからないはず Does she have infravision? やっぱり見てたのか Damn, she used leading question on me. That's such a high level technique. I avert my eyes from Chris and take off my lab coat. That's when I notice my coat is torn at the shoulder. ドジッコだったの俺はマッドサイエンティスト属性であってドジッコ属性など持っていない Seems like forever since I've talked to Chris who's ho and kioma はいはい Chris who suddenly holds out her hand ほら貸しなさいよ何ちょうどソーイングセット持ってるから縫ってやると言っているソーイングセットだとお前が悪いか Hand over my coat is ass. 実験大好きっ子のくせにそんな家庭的なものを実験大好きっ子であると同時に家庭的な女の子かもしれないじゃん。家庭的な女の子なのか相対的に見れば家庭的かもね。と言っても日本の女子高生の家庭的女の子指数がどれくらいか知らないけど。There's an index for that? First I've heard of it. Chris who skillfully threads the needle despite the darkness. あんたが服を破ってしまうのを見越してあらかじめ用意していたって言ってもらいたい、ね。Ma'am, I want the skill to thread needles on my first try in daylight, not even in the darkness. I'm sitting there, like, two minutes, like. Oh, I just realized how awful that looked. そんなわけあるかそれと。勘違いしないでほしいんだけど別に好きで塗ってあげてるわけじゃないんだからね<笑> If you want, ma'am 出たなツンデレセリフちゃかすなあんたが偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って私は偶然服を破って偶然ねまさかお前タイムリープしているということはないよなボーナスポイントはこのクリップ URL に関係ないものがあるのつまりあんたが服を破ってしまったからタイムリープして事前にソーイングセットを用意したって言ってもらいたいんですねわかりますそんなわけあるかそんなわけあるか大事なことなので2回言いました。アンダースタン確かに。わざわざタイムリープして対策を練るならば、ソーイングセットではなくタオルを用意しておくのが先だからな。何それ皮肉文句ばっかり。After working for a while, Chris who cuts the string with her teeth then hands me back my coat. ほら。ありがとう。出来については暗くて確認できないけどもし仮に出来が悪くても私の腕のせいじゃないこの暗さのせいよきっとちなみに糸の色についても何が出るかお楽しみに色もランダムなのか黒か赤かピンク確率は3分の1せめてピンクが出ないように祈ろう。寒いか。まあね。俺の上着を羽織るか。それだって濡れてるでしょ。まあ、そうだが
silence again. The words flow so naturally when it's just harmless banter. The one second of silence, and suddenly we have nothing to say. It must be because of what happened yesterday. I'm so desperate to avoid the topic that nothing seems safe. I know I need to say something, but what? Her voice is barely a whisper, but I can hear her clearly in the silence of the empty stairwell. I look at Krisu. She's hugging her knees to her chest, presumably against the cold. <laughs> My decision. I know what she means. That's why I can't answer. Where did that come from? Chrisu keeps staring into the darkness. そこ Thank you for the clip, Mim. <laughs> Trustworthy, helpful, card bat chest. Okay. No context needed. I'm, I hope there's context. <laughs> I want that whole mood there before <laughs> you get the no context needed part. Chris, you too. Uh, I have not yet seen your clip, Mim, <laughs> to be decided. <laughs> nope, it's an 8.5 second. Gosh dang it, Mim. I will watch it after stream. <laughs> so Chris is the same. She still has faint memories from previous world lines. Samus is back. Welcome back, Samus. Is. Yeah, watch that clip, and then I'm sure you're going to ask for context, even though it specifically says no context needed. Save my Yuri. I must undo the current world line. If I do that, Kursu will die. Ah, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, no. <laughs> Chrissy suddenly changes the subject. She looks around the dark, empty stairwell. Well, I guess now when YouTube asks if this is designed for kids, I'll know the answer. Not like any of this was designed for kids in the first place. <laughs> Do you need context, Samus? <laughs> No, Samus, it wasn't. We're at the part where Christina is sewing the rip in our shoulder, and we were just talking about... Mim was like, oh, I wish I had the power to just put the thread into the, the loop in the needle on my first try in the dark. And I was like, I wish I could do it in the daytime, because I, like, spend two minutes just doing this. <laughs> there is your clip with context. 
Obedient Sour Pigeon Grammar King. So now, Mem, you're an Obedient Sour Pigeon. I I'm happy with this. <laughs> uh, fine, you can be you can be trustworthy and what was the other word you had? And helpful. Also a bit of a dick. <laughs> I need to say it. Chris who cuts me off sharply, then buries her face in her knees. <laughs> you stand by your description of events. Chrissy raises her head and spears me with her glare. Aren't, aren't we close comrades? You always have my back and help you back up again. <laughs> After you're done laughing at me for tripping in the first place. Yep. <laughs> Chrissy grabs her own arms. The darkness, I can see her shoulders shaking. Now she's talking to herself in an angry tone. Chrissy has always been calm when faced with the unknown. I admired her for that. Thought she was facing this calmly too, but I was wrong. Behind her cool facade, she was struggling to cope with the knowledge that her very existence was in jeopardy. She was fighting that fear all alone, and now it has finally come to the surface. Of course she's afraid. However brilliant she may be, she's still just an 18-year-old girl. Chris, who abruptly stands up. I realize that I no longer hear the sound of rain pounding on the roof. I hear the pain in her voice, and also the resolve. Chrissy has made up her mind. I look away and clench my fists, my nails dig into the palms of my hand. So できるはずがないだろう。できるかできないかじゃない。あんたをやらなくちゃいけない。それしか道はない。ダメだ。お前は俺たちの大切な仲間だ。俺はお前も見捨てない。岡部。Chris drops to her knees and grabs me by the collar. I gasp for breath as she stares into my eyes. Her eyes are hard and stern. It's always like this when she scolds me. Always the same glare. This can't be happening. I hate this choice with no right answer. I hate the universe for being so cruel. 
And most of all, I hate myself for forcing Chrissy to speak these words when she is the one with the most to lose. Tears well up in my eyes, but I bite back, bite my lip and hold them back. Is there really no other way? Can't bear it. Here's a relatable story from Samus's. Someone came into his server asking for help fixing something they broke, doing exactly what was described as being dangerous and would prevent any sort of support. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> User... Users are not smart people. I look straight back at Chris as she holds me by the collar. <gasps> and tightly embrace her slender body. Her clothes are still wet from the rain, but all I feel is warmth radiating from the core of her being. <laughs> <laughs> Tension drains from her back and her hands. She gives her whole body to my embrace. Despite her fear, Chris has made her choice. It's time for me to do the same. I need to decide here and now. Ooh, cool, I can look at my phone. Let's delay our decision. Uh. Yeah, can I call anyone? No? Okay, fine, we have to make our decision. The future of the world. Which friend to let die? Holding Chrissy tightly, I whisper into her ear. I'm actually surprised that his response was the exact same. Chrissy suddenly pushes me away. She steps back, her face is hidden behind her hair. Her fists are trembling, her body exudes raw fury. If you haven't seen it, there's a Karen Simulator game. Yes, roar, heckin' fury. Chris, who stares at me in shock. Suzuha, Ferris, Lukako. I sacrifice their happiness to save my Eri. And the whole time, a voice in the back of my head was asking, Is this really okay? What gives me the right? This time, I want to save both of them without sacrificing anyone. <laughs> Chrissy turns away with a frown, then starts tapping her foot in a clear gesture of displeasure. <laughs> I won't lose Mayuri or Chrisu. 
<laughs> I hear Krisu grinding her teeth. Then she turns her back to me. Kristu <laughs> disappears down the stairs, muttering insults until I can no longer hear her. Now alone, I sigh into the darkness. Kristu's absolutely right. Can't think of a single way to save them both. I'm a fool, and yet I have to try. But this time, I won't have Kristu's help. I have to fight the universe alone. How do I say both Krisu and Mayuri? I can't use D-mail. Too much could go wrong. I don't want to make the same mistakes again. In the end, all I can do is time leap. Time leaping can't save Mayuri. At least it can delay her death. Give me time to find a solution. On this world line, Mayuri dies at half past seven on the night of August 17th. It's about 26 hours from now. My battle has no end in sight. If only Suzuha were here, I could have asked her for advice. But even alone, I must find a way. So resolved, I start time leaping again to save Mayuri. I've done this before, when Mayuri died the first time at Mocha's hands. I tried time leaping to prevent her death. I only tried running away that time. This time, I try every approach I can think of. I try hiring bodyguards to protect Mayuri. I tried taking Mayuri to South America, an entire world away from Japan. I try crippling CERN with attacks on their server, the ones that don't need the IBN 5100. I try getting Mayuri admitted to a hospital. It's hard given Mayuri's perfect health, but I manage. My goal is to keep her from dying by heart attack. I try everything I can possibly imagine. However, every plan fails. Mayuri dies again, and again, and again. Sometimes it's murder, sometimes an accident. But every time I leap, Mayuri dies. Maybe it really is impossible to resist fate. As long as I remain on this world line, Mayuri can't be saved. Fate will kill her every time. From Mayuri's perspective, she only dies once. But I've seen her die dozens of times. All because of me. And yet, it no longer affects me as it used to. Little by little, I've grown desensitized to her death. In the beginning, I felt unbearable pain every time I saw her die, and murderous rage towards the ones responsible. Now, I feel nothing. The realization stuns me. After dozens of leaps, I finally realize what should have been obvious from the beginning. I never leap back more than 26 hours. Why? I could go back as far as August 11th, one whole week in the past, yet I never do. Why? Because I know that even if I do, nothing will change. I don't believe that anything will change. Every time Mayuri dies, I find myself thinking, another failure, what went wrong this time? I calmly analyze Mayuri's death, and take my data and head for the time leap machine with a sigh like a gamer forced for the upteenth time to restart a particularly difficult stage. I'm just going through the motions. I didn't even realize until this moment how routine it had all become. Now that I have, my actions suddenly seem meaningless. I can't take another step. That's how I find myself here, sitting motionless in front of the time leap machine I've been staring at for hours. Out of curiosity. Okay, we don't have any new ones. Okay. When we get caught in the evening shower on the Roddy Con rooftop, my clothes got soaked, but now they're completely dry. My body temperature has dropped, but I don't have the energy to warm myself with a shower. I sluggishly get to my feet and pick up the headset. The sight of it fills me with resignation. Resignation, that's all. 
There's no desperate drive to save my Eri, no hope that this time I might succeed. Those emotions are long gone. In truth, they may have been gone since my argument with Chrisu. Deep down, I always knew she was right. I pretended not to see it. I told myself that the Time Leap Machine could solve everything. But that was just an excuse, a last attempt to satisfy my ego. In the end, all I'm doing is... I turn around in surprise, and there I see Chrisu standing in the doorway. I thought she never wanted to see me again. Why is she here? Chrisu ignores my question and fixes me with her usual glare. Time leap are you asking me? Uh, no, nope, no laundry is on. In the Basque uh, future gadget, I'm trying to see which one you're talking about, or is it behind Christina now and I can't see it? <laughs> Background noise is big when I talk right now. Sadly, that is the furnace, and I can't do anything about that. I know all too well. In the end, all I'm doing is running away. Yeah, that is the furnace, which is like a solid, I don't know, 15, 20 feet behind me behind a wall, and you can hear it. <laughs> if I had known I would have to make this choice, then I would have refused Suzuha when she entrusted me with her mission. Let me see if I can, like, adjust myself to... I'm gonna mute myself for a second and try and, uh, adjust my microphone slightly. Okay, let's see if that's any better. Actually, let me do this. Testing. Okay, let's see if that's any better. Actually, let's turn that down a little bit more. Testing. Okay. これまでも迷いを助けるためっていう大義名分で。たくさんの人を俺は傷つけてきたんだ。しかもそのことで感じる罪の意識もだんだん鈍っていくんだ。人としてのまともな感覚が失われていくんだ。だったらなんで今あんたは迷ってる？ タイムリープマシンっていう保険が効かないからカモナ俺はこのマシンを使いこなしてなんていなくて振り回されているだけなのかも逃げたって苦しくなるだけ。She suddenly looks away, and she leans against the wall and smiles bitterly. 私が is Chris who running too? From what? Himanokabe,見てられない。自分の顔、鏡で見た。急に老けたように見える。心がボロボロになってるんじゃない。そこまで思い悩まずに、私の言うことを素直に受け入れればいいんだ。さっき言った通り。あんたはここにとどまっちゃいけない。ベータ世界線に行きなさい。迷いが死なない世界。それがあんたのためでもあるし、私のためでもある。She is right. I have no other options left. No more D-mails, no more time leaps. There's no perfect world where both Chris and my area live. Maybe there are things I've yet to try, but I'm certain that all of them will end in vain. As long as I stay on this world line, my Yuri will die. 
If I go to the Beta World line, Chrisu will die. Never be able to talk like this again. It's only been 20 days since we met, and yet... Memories of Chris who flash before my eyes. I'm so glad none of them are a shower scene. ピンピンしてますんで。例えば実際に皆さんが体ごと過去や未来へ行くことができるようなタイムマシンを作るにはまず何が必要か考えてみましょう。Yeah, I think the furnace is done being noisy, so I'm gonna move my mic back. There we go. ひょっとすると、とんでもないものを作っちゃったかもしれない。前にあんた言ってくれたでしょ。私のことは大切な仲間だって。あれ、結構その嬉しかったっていうか。じゃあ、電話レンジの改良が終わったら一緒についてきて。あんたの力になりたい。ありがとう。私のためにそこまで苦しんでくれて。So much has happened these past 20 days. We argued, we exchanged insults. We made incredible discoveries together. When confronted with the implications, we shared our fears. Whenever I hit a dead end in my struggle to save my Eri, I always turned to Chrisu for help. He always listened, always believed me. And I helped her too. She was distraught over her father. We promised to go to Aomori together. Without this genius girl on our side, we would not have the Time Leap Machine. Proud, passionate Makise Krisu, always strong, or at least pretending to be. A little noisy too, and serious to a fault. Before I knew it, she had become the center of the lab. From the very beginning, I was attracted to her radiant confidence. I found myself mesmerized by her every gesture, hanging on her every word. I listened enraptured whenever she presented her latest theory. At the end of the day, the reason I never called her by her name was because I was too embarrassed. I admired her, I longed for her, and I didn't want to admit it to myself. Only now do I realize the truth. I love her. And that is why I want so desperately to save her. She's not just a fellow lab member. To me, Chrissy was far more than that. And yet, I have no choice. In the end, everything she said was right. And to, to what I've seen so far, there has been absolutely zero changes since the Paradox Meltdown route so far. In a desperate attempt to hold back my tears, I bite my lip tightly. A taste of blood spreads through my mouth. I pound my fist on the table. Silence. Nothing moves. Outside the window is only darkness. Is this what it's like to be the only person left in the world? Yeah, 
Mayuri ya Hashida kara wa kie chau no yo ne. At this point, I'm entirely convinced the only difference between the past ending and this is we get to hear what she says before we leap to the beta world line. <laughs> Prissy's cheeks start to redden and she turns away. Her voice is barely a whisper. に忘れない。誰よりも大切な女のことを忘れたりしない。え、それ、何馬鹿なこと言ってんのよ。事実だ。そ、それは、えっと、証明、証明が必要。それがないと私は法廷式を用意できない。クリスウスゲティングフラストレートフォーサムリーズン。ACTHの分泌過剰になりガンマハから確立共鳴が起きてヒルベルト曲線のハウストルフ次元は無限大と仮定されるわけです。That is, we can measure the asymptotic line with position emission tomography. クリス I speak her name. Our eyes meet. Oreba. <laughs> yes, you did, because you clipped me reading the, um... Yeah, this thing. That's why I'm- that's the only reason I'm skipping it, as I've read it once already. Chrissy looks away. Her face is bright red. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Chrissy <laughs> suddenly looks me straight in the eye. Her face is still red, but her expression is firm. She walks straight up to me, grabs me by the collar, and jerks me towards her. Did I make her mad? Perhaps Chris who hates me for some reason. Maybe she really did mean all those insults she said to me. That'd be really sad. I slowly lick my trembling lips and timidly try to ask a question. I do as I'm told, though I still don't know why she's so angry. My collar is still in Chrisu's grip. <laughs> Abruptly, I feel a soft sensation against my lips. The faint scent of citrus tickles my nose. And I open my eyes in surprise. I see Chrisu's face scant millimeters away. Then, I understand what has happened. She's kissing me. The lips are very warm. My mind goes blank. I'm unable to think. I want to stay like this forever. But soon, our lips separate. <laughs> Chrissy looks down shyly. <laughs><笑> Sure, I'd be honored to be the first to see something cool. Nice Cinderella line, Mim. Osamus, is that your emote? It is. The multi... Oh, multi-D3 emotion. Is that Samus's face? Is that what that's supposed to be? Do, do I understand that? 
Anyways, that is amazing that you have an emote. I knew you had one in. It's Dark Samus's visor. I I know I know. <laughs> Metroid things. But yes, I knew I knew you had one in. I'd seen it in your Discord, and I'm so excited that you finally got it approved. So, my experience with Twitch has been like some emotes have taken like literally like eight or nine days to approve, and then other ones take under eight hours, and just so weird. <laughs> Awkward Popeye emote when? What would that even look like, Mim? Is it is it me like covering up my chest, the embarrassed Popeye? Or is it me with the blush lines? <laughs> to resolve all issues, you decide to have the one emote and call it emotion. I'm, <laughs> I, I do kind of like the idea that it's like, um, it, it's like Samus hype and then Samus love and then it's just all the same emote picture because <laughs> you can't see the expression under the helmet. <laughs> My heart fills with love for Chrissy as she makes her frantic excuses. What a relief. Chrissy wasn't mad. She was just trying to hide her embarrassment. I want to be with her even more. I want to talk with her even more. I want to learn even more about her. But I know that wish can never come true. That's fair. Uh, you could- do you have the- the bit emote slot? You could also put one there. People forget about the bit emote slots. My chest tightens. I feel like I'm suffocating. Desperate to keep my emotions under control. Emotions? They're-, they're... <laughs> I place my own hands on top of Chrissy's, which are still grabbing my collar. <laughs> Yeah, I think the way the bit one works is by default you have a hundred and a thousand unlocked, and then as people go up, like as people reach those, it unlocks like two above uh, the highest person. It still boggles my mind that you can go down, there's like a one million bit emote slot, and I'm like, who the heck has given a million bits to someone? I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but like... Who? I remember playfully kissing Mayuri in elementary school. Just a little while ago, I forcibly kissed Moaka to silence her. That was on another world line, and now it never happened, so I guess it doesn't count? あんた。I'm lying, of course. I've never felt such an intense kiss as that. The shock was like a lightning bolt to the brain. But still, I'm lying. Because if I miss this opportunity, I'll never be able to touch Chrisu again. This is my last chance. Chrissy <laughs> fidgets. She usually glares at me harshly, but now she's avoiding my eyes. I decide to take the initiative. I wrap my arm gently around Chrissy's waist, pull her slender body against mine. So, so yeah, I completely understand Samus's. Like when I first got my emotes done, it it just it feels good because I I feel bad if people like subscribe or give bits or something, and they get like the only thing they get in return is they don't get ads. Like I just feel bad that there's like not something that they get. So, when I first had them, I felt really happy. 
Chrissy looks up at me, shyly. What is she worried I'll do? Um, see last clip, that's what she's worried about. Suspicious. <sighs> Mim has given a hundred suspicious bits. Thank you, Mim. But also, stop, stop being suspicious. I run my fingers softly through her hair. Then, I slowly bend down. Also... <laughs> just- and this is not a challenge to anyone. Let me start with that. This is not a challenge. But I don't think anyone's catching Deadbeard anytime soon. He is given a ridiculous amount of bits. We're both shy, so we end up pecking at each other's lips, like two small birds. Then we draw back and look at each other. Chrissy's eyes are wet, tears are running down her cheeks. I kiss them away. Suspicious. Multi Dark Samuses use this command? Suspicious. Eight people have seemed suspicious. They're salty. <laughs> We press our lips together again. Stronger than the first time. Longer than the first time. I never want to let go. We embrace each other tightly. Our feelings too powerful to contain. We seek each other's warmth again and again. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, Samus, is, you're just looking more and more suspicious so far. Locked in our embrace, we feel each other's breath, feel each other's scent, we feel each other's taste. Chrissy's whisper resonates through our, our embrace. Yeah, take that, Einstein, you dick. Totally wrong. Sam susses. Nagakunatari, <laughs> saw him vent. So I said, How does Chrissy feel about me? In the end, she never really answered my question. Early morning, Akihabara Station. Chrissy was standing before the entrance with her huge suitcase beside her. She waves to me shyly as I approach. Then she blushes and shoots me her usual glare. After that kiss, Chris went back to her hotel to pack. That suitcase must hold everything that she brought to Japan. She's going back to America. So I don't want to call her to call her to call her. I don't want to call her to call her. I don't want to call her to call her. Chrissy looks like she's about to cry. I'm sure I look just as sad. But I won't cry. I don't have that right. I hand her future gadget number two, the Bamboo Helicam. It's a bamboo helicopter equipped with a CCD camera which allows it to record video in the air. A truly groundbreaking invention. Sadly, due to its constant high-speed rotation, the video it produces tends to cause motion sickness. <laughs> I wanted to give her future gadget number seven, Ghost in the Ball, but it was too big. Chris accepts Bamboo Helicam with a strained smile. 
and then silence. No words of farewell. We just look at each other. Aomori. Percy spreads her arms wide. Without a moment's hesitation, I step forward and embrace the girl genius one last time. Percy smiles faintly and turns and walks towards the entrance with suitcase in hand. I watch her go, unable to move a muscle. I want to stop her. I want to wrap my arms around her and tell her to stay with me forever. But I can't. This is what we decided. To save my Eerie. To save the future. Sorry, Krisu. Can't save you. Krisu will disappear. She'll be left behind on this world line. There's no place for her in the coming world. <laughs> I don't know whether Chris who hears my words. She keeps walking. Stride steady. Back straight. Long silky hair fluttering in the wind. She's quickly fading into the distance. But I can tell. I see her shoulders trembling. We will never meet again. Our world lines will never cross again. I'm glad I met you, Chrisu. I would have been lost without you. I love you. Goodbye. I stand there in the entrance as commuters file past, till long after she's vanished from sight, afraid that any motion, any thought, might cause the tears to fall. Mayuri and Daru turn to me and nod. Today is the last day of Kamima. Daru wanted to attend, of course, but a little begging convinced him to prioritize the operation. I take a look around the lab. These 20 days have been madness. It's incredible to think at one point this lab had a whole eight members. And now, we're back to three. The memories we made, the experiences we shared. To save Mayuri, I will undo them all. There is sorrow in me, and guilt. I engraved them deep inside my heart. I'll never forget. I mustn't forget these long, yet short summer days. But still, I chose to erase our memories. Or I choose to erase our memories. I choose to return everything back to normal. Suza has mission is irrelevant. I'm not doing this for the future. As long as my area lives, nothing else matters. Daru. Dara starts typing on the IBN 5100. It's already connected to his main computer. This will get us into CERN central database, where they keep the data they mine with Echelon. There, we will locate the first email I sent on July 28th, and erase all trace of its existence. With this, I can reach the beta world line. At last, my Yuri will be safe. I look at my Yuri. She's on the couch, sitting straight as a ramrod, with her grandmother's pocket watch pressed to her ear. She stays still, her eyes closed. Whenever my Yuri wants to calm down, she listens to the sound of that pocket watch. Earlier, I told my Yuri everything. I guess she's come to terms with it, in her own way. The actual work, I've left to Daru. No problem there. While waiting for him to finish, I walk to the development room. In the center of the room is the time leap machine. I squat down and gently brush my fingers against the microwave surface. It's cool to the touch. I've made irreplaceable friends because of this thing. And because of this thing, I've hurt them. But I don't want to blame the tool. It's how you use the tool that matters. I've got to admit, it saved me more than once. But still. Once this is over, I'll destroy the time leap machine. 
You must never make the same mistakes again. Tara points to a string of characters. My name is there, followed by the message I wrote about Chrisu's death. Three lines in total, each 12 characters long. This data led Durin Cern to our doorstep. At FB's instruction, Moaka and the Rounders attacked. If Sousa is right, then by erasing this data, we will escape from Attractor Field Alpha, where Cern dominates the future. That will take us to Attractor Field Beta. The Beta World Line, then its range of convergence, to a future without Myuri's death. Myuri is standing next to me, gazing intently at the monitor. She grasps my hand firmly. She looks anxious, so I pat her head to calm her down. Daru stands up and gestures to the open seat. I sit down and face the keyboard. This time... This time it ends. Chrissy's face floats through my mind. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Goodbye, Chrisu. Slowly, I raise my right hand and extend my index finger. Daru twitches at my cry. Unpress of this key, and Kursu will die. I firmly grip my coat at the shoulder, where it has been stitched together with jagged pink thread. I wish for Myri to live, Chrisu to die. That is the truth, and I must never forget it. This is the choice of Okabe Rintaro. I swing down my index finger. At the exact same time, I hear the lab door open. My eyes dart towards the sound. <laughs> there, in the doorway, stands Chrisu. Her face is flushed. Was she running? Why is she here? She should be on her way to the airport right now. Chrisu is looking at me. Her eyes are glistening, but her face is all smiles. Did she come back for me? In a split second of frozen time, I imagine I hear her voice. We didn't say goodbye, she says. Immediately afterwards, my finger strikes the enter key. The world starts to warp. The timeline is being rewritten. I feel my consciousness being sucked into the vortex. Reading Steiner. So far, I, I don't notice any difference whatsoever, Mim. Divergence is changing. The warp accelerates. Chrisu. Daru. Mayuri. Everything inside the lab is shifting. Color fades as my consciousness leaves this world line. Uh, no. There, like, literally there's only one difference and it's respond to a message and we definitely did that. Like, it's literally the only difference is you respond to an email. I turn to face Chrisu, desperate to burn this last sight of her into my eyes. She raises her hand. The world gradually stops spinning. Little by little, color returns. I look to the door. 
He was standing there just a moment ago. My assistant, Christine Makise Krisu. Uh, if you remember the numbers, props to you, I do not. <laughs> Now, she is gone. Vanished like a dream. I look around the room. Next to me is Daru. Behind me is Mayuri. Everything is where it should be. It looks no like nothing has changed at all. Uh... I feel like it could be, like, ever so slightly different. Like, answering that one, I'm- I'm assuming it's- yeah. What the heck is this? Okay, that's weird. Something happened if I watch it for a bit? I'm gonna say no. Maybe I need to watch it a little bit longer. No, it's flashing in a pattern. <laughs> Good attachments. I gently touched my coat's shoulder, where Chris, you fixed a torn seam. It's gone. My coat isn't torn. The stitches, uneven from having been sewn in the dark, have disappeared. There's no trace of that ridiculous pink thread. I stand up and head to the development room. Underneath the table, the time leap machine. No, that's not the time leap machine. It's the phone wave. Name subject to change. The upgrades Chris you made are gone. Nothing has changed. The world is exactly the same. In all respects, save one. Chris you was never here. Every trace of her has vanished. Chrissu is nowhere now. Nowhere except in my memories. Mayuri and Daru are looking at now, me. Now, the number 004 was... Who was that? I need to ask. Even though I know what the answer will be. Okarin, there are no people in the number 004. I don't have any other names or other members of the number 004. Yeah. I knew that it would be like this. The fact that they forgot her existence is so saddening. So frightening. I'm the only person in the world who remembers Makise Krisu as lab member 004. So I won't forget. I alone will live with her memory engraved upon my heart. Now, time to proclaim my triumph. There are still things that must be done. Many sacrifices were made to get here. But despite all that, this is my victory. I have won. <laughs> my Yuri and Daru stare in wonder at my abrupt laughter. Yeah, they don't even remember we discovered time travel. Yeah, in this timeline, uh, they've only done the D-mails. They haven't done time leaping. まさに俺は神に等しき存在となった。そして辿り着いたこの大いなる地平。我が野望が叶う世界。世界の支配構造はリセットされ。混沌の未来が待つであろう。これこそがスペシャス。スタインズ。ミム、thank uh, you for 37 sadness bits. オカリ。Mayuri suddenly throws her arms around me. I freeze, utterly taken aback. Dara looks as confused as I am. Mayuri looks up at me and smiles. 
142. To be honest, I knew you were over 100 because you did 100 earlier. I was expecting it to be 169, and that's not a challenge to make it 169. 42 is also an appropriate answer. It's the gentlest smile I've ever seen. No, th there's no challenges. No. That's why I start with th this isn't a challenge. <laughs> Quote 38. Balloon Drag Queen, best leader name of all time. ね。さらけ出してもいいんだよ。<laughs> Just like that, the mask shatters. All it took was one word for Mayuri. Mayuri, the sister I never had. The girl who always needed my protection. I had to save her. That was my purpose. I even sacrificed the girl I loved. But now, I finally realize that it's over. Mayuri is safe. I'm... free. Once more, I see Chrissy's face in my mind's eye. I recall the warmth of her body, the softness of her lips, the weight of her last words. One by one, they pound against my heart. I can't bear it anymore. <sighs> my vision blurs, tears run down my cheeks. <laughs> A tidal wave of emotion crashes over me. Nothing remains to hold it back. I'll never see Chrisu again. That knowledge shreds my heart. I can't hold back my sobs. I can't stop my tears. This is the world I've been searching for. A world where Mayuri does not die. And yet, it is missing the person most precious to me. It's too much. It's too cruel. Why did it have to be Chrisu? Why was I forced to choose? Why did she send me off with a smile? I cling to Mayuri. She strokes my hair gently. I surrender to my grief. Three days have passed since then, and my area is still alive. Moak and the Rounders have not attacked, and Tenoji has shown no sign of moving against us. Daru has been visiting May Queen as usual, while my area has been working on her costume designs for next Kamima. Everything is back to normal. Everything, save for the hole in my heart. <sighs> I'm standing by the dumpster out back of the lab. We just finished dumping the last of the trash. This morning I called Daru, and together we dismantled the phone wave in the IBN 5100. <sighs> IBN 
ジューシーカラーでナンバーワンを食べられないのです電子レンジぐらい拾ってくればいいだろう We no longer need the phone wave that miraculous time machine built by coincidence、It、brought Chris to into my life but at the same time it made many people suffer、It、must never be used again not by me not by anyone it's time for the phone wave to die with it the insane mad scientist hoan kyoma lord of space and time i recall what chris who once said こ o までの自分を否定したくないの。たとえ失敗ばかりだったとしてもそれを含めて今の自分があるんだから。Even if nothing in the future is guaranteed, even though I may die tomorrow, life was never meant to be redone. That's fine by me. Wouldn't you say so too, Chrisu? I look up at the sky, and even though it's the middle of the day, I can see a single star shining. Maybe it's Venus, which suddenly reminds me. Every night we casually travel through time. That's what Chris you said. And each and every word she spoke, I carve into my heart. But I'll never let them slip from memory, for as long as my life endures. This music sounds different. Maybe it's like a post credit scene? Because this sounds different from the other ones. Is Angie. Angie raindrops. <laughs> Four tiny rays circle C! I. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not see any difference. But this, this song seems different to me. P tiny raised three? Yes, exactly. In, in that ending, there was no difference. This song, I'm pretty sure, is different. So I'm wondering if there's a post credit scene. So I guess we just gotta wait. I don't wanna press any buttons in case I skip something. Oh! Phone call in game. What the heck is this? I can't, I can't open, so I hope it does automatically. Okay, this is definitely different. Hi, Moshi Moshi. Eh? Darga? Bokuna? Oto san? Kimi no? Nani ten no? Ha? オカベリンタロに変われなあオカリン謎の女が変わってくれってさ誰だお願い今すぐラジカンの屋上に来てだから誰だよ私は2036年から来たそこにいる橋田イタルの娘名前は天音鈴葉ちょっと待て What the? What is going on? What?
There's more? Crap, there's more. Well, do you feel betrayed now, guys? There's... I didn't even know this was a thing. There's an extra chapter. <laughs> Props to whoever wrote that guide for not revealing this fact. <laughs> do we want to save it for next stream? Uh... I'm going to quickly Google, and without any spoilers, see how long this is. So if it's super short, I'll finish it now. If not... Then I will continue. If it's just like 10 minutes or something, I'll do it. If it's if it's within half an hour, I'll do it. Because that would be normal stream time. If it's longer than half an hour, I'll push it off to next time. I'm Googling very specific. Uh, geez. Um, Okay, I'm going to go up and I'm going to continue a couple slides, see if it gets to the scene that matches the thing I found. If it is, it's about another three and a half hours if there's like no stream commentary around it. Um, if that's the case, it's getting pushed off to like another two or three episodes. Uh... Okay. She said to meet her on the roof of RoddyCon. When I get there, I find it cordoned off. The roof was off limits to begin with, but now it's also part of a crime scene. As if I need, if, as if I needed another reminder of the murder that took place here three weeks ago. I duck under the yellow tape and open the door. The lock is still broken. I can hardly breathe after running up the stairs to get here. As I gasp for air, I look across the stark white concrete. And naturally, my eyes go straight to the satellite sitting smack dab in the middle of the roof. <laughs> yep, this is the same scene. So yeah, we've got probably at least another two to three streams worth of content. Um... So yeah, um, yeah, I did say, I did say I, this stream would be a bit shorter. I would like to honor that. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna stop it here with that hype of there's probably two or three more episodes. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone who tuned in for that. Everyone who went through literally the exact same content as last stream's first hour and 15 minutes. <laughs>